Back in the workshop, some goodies arrived. Some more essential tools to restock and resupply. Some really handy assortments. All this stuff, if you're new to the channel, most of it I, I get from uh, right from eBay, right out of China. So, dirt cheap prices. Let's take a look. First up, before we get into anything, this is on the bench from uh, my initial part of the review I started taping last night. This is a plasma cutter. Not just a plasma cutter, the cheapest one on Amazon that seems to be reliable is a Cut 45i. Um, there are lots of different names that they're, that they're marketed under, but basically you hook it to your air compressor, airline in through a regulator, also a uh, display on here from that regulator, which is pretty cool. We have, uh, most of them have the gauge at the back, but long story short, plasma cutter, this is 110 volt, so you can use it on any household voltage, but you use a, it makes a really high pressure plasma, or high energy plasma arc out of the wand here and uses the compressed air stream to blow the liquid molten metal away. Basically, it's a crazy high temperature cutting device, a lot hotter, hotter than like acetylene torch or whatever. And um, really handy, no consumable parts other than the tips. So it's, you don't use the gas like you would with an oxyacetylene torch, much cheaper to run. So we'll give it a go in an upcoming video. Okay, first up, we got some assortments. Let's go ahead and check these up before we do anything else. We got some O-rings. This is super handy to have. I have a, another larger assortment you've seen in a previous video. Uh, quite cheap, and these are the metric dimensioned ones. So, uh, real common on carburetors and stuff. Uh, these you'll see behind carburetors from carburetor to intake and these other ones all over the place. So, handy to have an assortment. Cotter pins is something that I never had to buy in the past when I was a mechanic. The shop obviously kept these in stock, but now I, I don't have any. So bought myself a whole assortment. These are used for uh, castellated nuts and retention on various things. Um, just keep nuts from backing off and uh, you can hold wheels onto axles. Actually, my generator needs one right now. So it's a good assortment. It did come through broken, but that happens from China sometimes. Snap ring assortment, not gonna need these terribly often, but when you do, you need them and local hardware stores very rarely keep these in stock. These uh, you'll find on all kinds of different shafts, bearing retention, you name it. It's uh, uh, really, really handy to have these an assortment of your own. So when, when these things go flying, when you take apart something apart, you're all set. Fiber washers. These are mostly, most commonly used as sealing rings on stuff, um, like uh, oil drain plugs and whatnot. Uh, really handy to have the fiber washers because they're much easier to get a seal uh, rather than the, the tin crush washers. And these are the common dimensions that I've seen. Uh, like I said, mainly oil drain plugs and whatnot, but very cheap assortment, handy dandy. And this, one of the most handy assortments I think I have ever purchased. Again, this is normally a shop supply back when I used to be in the trade. Hose clamps, constant tension hose clamps. So these you'll use on fuel lines, most commonly on small engines and even automotive applications for low pressure only, but uh, really handy to have either just, you squeeze them with a pair of pliers and release the tension uh, and then put them on your hose and let go. And they hold constant tension, even as, as the hose changes dimensions over time, as the hose uh, gets um, harder or softer or weaker or thinner under compression, these things continue to take up the slack. So handy dandy, really good hose clamps. These ones seem like high quality ones, kind of impressed by them. So again, handy stuff to have. Okay, next up. We'll take a look at some specialty tools. Uh, not a tool. Spare chain for that uh, cheap Amazon saw I got. Uh, if the video is not already out yet, I'm pretty sure I know how to fix that saw. But uh, I needed to have a spare chain for it because a saw is no good without a spare chain. This is a really specialty tool. 
often used uh, by mechanics. Uh, also known, this is most commonly known as a pin vise. It's a little adjustable screwdriver basically that pinches with the collet at the end and will hold very, very small drill bits. In fact, numbered drill bits usually. This thing came with a set down to quite small, but let me go back to my toolbox. This is something that we use as, as mechanics back when I was working on carburetors. This is a drill index for numbered drills, we referred to them as. Uh, these are numbered for jet sizes for carburetors. Really handy if you want to change the jetting on a carburetor. You can drill it out larger, or you can use the proper size and very carefully with the pin vise, drill it out so that you removed any clog in the jet. This came up on the uh, on the pressure washer uh, video you would have seen recently uh, where, I re where I repaired a hard starting Briggs & Stratton pressure washer. It's likely that the main jet is just tiny bit clogged and I could just run one of these numbered drills through and remedy that situation but I had already changed the carburetor on the video. So that's handy to have. Automatic center punch. This is something that uh, I have had many of over the years and I just lost it. You just press down on it on any hard surface and it will automatically punch uh, a centering punch, just a divot in it. Uh, any even high, high uh, tensile strength steel, it'll put a dent in it and you can use it to guide a drill bit. So you can, when you're drilling out broken bolts and stuff, it's very handy to have. And another thing that I lost, my small brass punch. These things are non-marring. You want a brass punch for punching out bearings and bearing races, uh, bearing races specifically, uh, so you don't mar the, the steel where the race is set in. Uh, handy to have. Uh, I don't know where mine went. It just disappeared. And this, if we can get it out, is a very interesting tool that I've never owned before. This is an impact driver for an air chisel. So an air hammer, this goes, actually, hold on, I'll go get mine. Things make much more sense when you can see an example. This is an air hammer. It is a mechanic's best friend here in southwestern Ontario where everything is always seized up and stuck. This one, normally they just have a spring around the end. I have a very expensive Mac Tools collet on there that makes things a lot easier to work with. What this does, this is a 3 8 drive drive on it, so you can put a socket on there or uh, a screwdriver tip, anything that, that drives from 3 8 and then you can put a wrench on here. So while you're impacting it with a lot of force out of this air hammer, you can actually be rotating it to get stuck bolts, stuck screws, you name it, off. Ingenious. I, in all the years as a mechanic, I never had one of these. Very simple tool. Uh, shake and break, it's known as. This is a 3 8 you can get a half inch drive. Uh, 3 8 is plenty because I can adapt it up. If I'm busting half drive stuff loose, I, I don't need the air hammer for that. I'm going to be using heat. So, very neat. And speaking of impact drivers, some bits for an impact driver. Um, these things, oops end up on the floor, are perpetually broken. So these are the driver bits that you use for um, like Honda ATVs and motorcycles and actually any motorcycle side covers and stuff. You'll see there's always countersunk screws in them. Um, they're, what is that? It's a Japanese standard. I'll put it on the screen down below for it. It looks like Phillips, but uh, you need an impact driver to get those out. Here, I'll grab it. In case you're unfamiliar, super handy tool. Got some driver bits already in there. This handy device, you put your driver bit in the end of it. You turn the call at the direction that you're going by preloading the end here. You hold it against your screw and then you hit the end of it with a hammer while holding tension on it, either forward or reverse. It's almost always going to be reverse, right? And it takes that impact, drives 
your driver in, but also rotates it from the spring force and the driving mechanism in here. Wonderful devices. They work fantastic, but uh, forever losing driver bits for mine. And uh, I did not have, say, that style of bit, and now I do. So handy dandy. And one last one that arrived. <clears throat> this is a USB boroscope. Now, I've had some of the larger boroscopes over the years, but now they finally come down to a good price, like $10 price. We're gonna give this a try. I think this will be useful for looking down into cylinders and all kinds of interesting jobs, but primarily, taking a quick look down a spark plug hole to see whether a cylinder is worth uh, recovering. But yeah, we'll give it a go. Um, I think I'll do that right now. And uh, I'll put it in the next video up on the channel. So we'll give it a go. If you like what I'm doing here, click a thumbs up on these videos, guys. It's summertime, so obviously we're doing a lot of stuff from the shop. And uh, as fall comes in, well, we'll move back in, uh, probably into the electronics lab. And a little bit more out here. A little, I'm trying to do a little bit more well-rounded to the channel. A little bit of everything. Some of the things that I'm working on every day. Last year and previous years, I just suspended videos in the summer. And that's no fun for anybody. So I thought, I might as well bring you guys along. Cheers.